All right, going to do a very quick video here on this Greg Laurie, Minister of Satan. He just comes right out and lies to his congregation. My comment is down there, right there. Uh, just listen to what this guy says. Um, see, the whole, the whole satanic agenda of these hirelings, these ministers of Satan, is to take the Bible away from the people and then just say, don't bother looking up things in your Bible. Don't, they never say, turn in your Bible to such and such. Uh, you don't see this. Uh, you know, of course, somebody else said, now let me start over. All right, going to do a real quick video refuting this minister of Satan right here. Um, he's part of the whole modern church agenda where they never tell people to turn in your Bible. Um, they just post those, those scriptures up on the screen or whatever else, and they basically make people um, you know, fall in love with a false Jesus, a, the Antichrist, basically. And they use new versions that come from the Vatican. People have no clue about anything. Um, related to the Bible or manuscript evidence or anything else. Um, and it's all about disarming uh, Christians, professing Christians. They're not real Christians. But just flat out lies to his people. Let's watch. And I'll show you from the scriptures why he's wrong. But there are many sentiments that people carry in life that are simply not biblical. Uh, one would be, well, God is angry at me and he wants to ruin my life. So God is angry with me and wants to ruin my life. And that's not in the Bible. Listen to what he says. Some people think this. God's just out to ruin everything that I planned for myself. You know, that is so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wrong. Okay, effeminate little girl boy uh, with your, you know, little, little teens on and whatever else. Okay, God is not going to go out and ruin you, huh? God is not angry with me. Um, here we go. Psalm 711. God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, if the wicked doesn't turn, if he doesn't repent, he will wet his sword. God will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He had ordained his arrows against the persecutors. That's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. God's not that way. It's in the New Testament. We have love now from God. Oh, really? Um, verse Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. That is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Sounds like Psalm chapter 7, or Psalm 7, verse 11. And down through. Huh, yeah. Old Testament coming into the New Testament. Same thing. God is still angry with the wicked every day. But I'll show you an even better one. This is a real good one for these uh, stupid fakers. Um, <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And here you go, verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You mean to tell me God would actually send a lie so that somebody would go to hell? Really? Yes. God hates the wicked that much. He's angry with the wicked every day. Let's continue with this lying devil. God's mad at me. God is not mad at you. Uh, God is angry with the wicked every day. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, Greg Locke, liar. God is mad about you. If there's <laughs> one thing that's clear in Scripture, <laughs> it is this. God loves you. <laughs> God loves you. <laughs> Little devil laugh there. It's called duping delight. God loves you. Exact quick Bible search there. God loves you. Sorry, no matching verses found, King James Version. Hmm, you mean to tell me he would lie? Exactly. God does not love, present tense, a sinner. No, he doesn't, unless that sinner is a saved sinner, a born-again sinner. We still sin after we get saved. God loved you enough to send his son to die for your pathetic, worthless hide. My pathetic, worthless hide. I had to get saved. Everyone has to get saved. There's none righteous, no, not one. Let's continue. 
You see it from Genesis to Revelation. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. The Bible even... Oh, uh, where's the scripture? Where's the scripture reference that we could check that? You mean, he wouldn't just, you know, kind of say his own thoughts and then just kind of make you think. It's, it's from Genesis to Revelation. It says this. Where? No scripture given. Turn in your Bible. Let me show you. No. You can be as God's knowing good and evil. I'll make up my own scriptures. Just lead people in these little speeches and things. Make them think that I'm actually quoting scripture when he's not. And says, God is love. First John 3, 1 says, Behold what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called God's children. God. Ah, uh, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. And again, see, he didn't tell you. Pick up your Bible and read this. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. All right? He didn't quote that. And the love, by the way, that's there is for you when you get saved. But see, false prophets will say, there's love of God there towards somebody who's saved, but I won't just say towards somebody who's saved. I'll just say it applies to everybody when it clearly doesn't. Lost people are not the sons of God. You have to become born again to become a son of God. Let's continue. God loves you. God wants to bless you. God wants to give you a life that is worth living. Now, let Okay, how can God bless you if you are going to live in a life of sin? The wages of sin is death. All sin is negative. God's going to bless me as I go out and, and get drunk every weekend. And it's the blessing of God. No, it's called cirrhosis of the liver. God's going to bless me as I go out and smoke cigarettes all the time. No, it's called emphysema. It's called lung cancer. God's going to bless me as I go out and fornicate. Oh, it's called all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases. You see, God wants to bless you. Only if you get saved. Only if you are born again. Minister of Satan. Let's take the flip side of that. And we hear people say, God loves me and accepts me as I am. Right? This is usually said by someone that is probably doing something they should not do. Yeah, I know that I go out and I party and get drunk on the weekend, but God loves me and accepts me as I am. Well, I know that we're getting a divorce and we don't have a biblical reason, but still, God loves me and accepts me as I am. I know that I shouldn't do this, but... Well, you're just, you're preaching that yourself. Hypocrite. God loves me and accepts me as I am. Other variations of this is, no one is perfect. And one of my favorites, hey man, don't judge my journey. Yeah, I might judge your journey a little bit. Especially because your journey might lead you to the wrong place. Fact of the matter is, and what place would that be? Do you believe in a literal burning eternity in the lake of fire? I wonder how often he preaches that. As the Bible tells us that judgment begins in the house of God. A Christian is to be discerning, and a Christian is to make judgments. When Jesus says, oh, by the way, their favorite verses are, judge not lest you be judged. And let uh, that's not a verse. Okay, uh, judge not lest you be judged uh, is not a verse. All right, um, go to the passage here. I have a whole common sayings of lost people. Judge not that ye be not judged. You know, uh, judge not lest ye be judged yourself or whatever. That's a Metallica song. Him that is without sin cast the first stone, right? That's our way of saying, go away and stop talking to me, Christian, with your Bible. Now, it is true. You're not talking with your Bible, though. See how these guys, they'll flip. They'll tell you a lie, and then they'll act like they're telling the truth. They'll kind of contradict themselves. I'm so familiar with how these hirelings work. Dealt with them for years. Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged, but a better translation would be condemn. A better uh -huh. translation would be Hold Jesus on. said, a way of saying, go away and stop talking to me, Christian, <laughs> with your Bible. Now, it is true, Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged, but. It is true that Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged. No, he didn't say that. But a better translation would be, 
It is true that Jesus said this, but a better translation would be, oh, you're better than Jesus then. Jesus said it, but this is a better translation. He's changing whatever the thing is that he's quoting. Just making it clear, oh, you can say it. That Jesus is what Jesus said, but it'd be better to say it this way. Think about what the guy's saying. And a better translation would be, condemn not lest you be condemned. But this idea of God loves me and accepts me as I am needs to be looked at. So is it true that God loves me and accepts me as I am? I would say technically the answer is yes. But now let <laughs> Technically the answer is yes. I mean, God loves me and accepts me how I am and whatever. And I don't have to quit sinning and, you know, sin that he had to die for. It's okay if I continue in that. Uh, so accepts me as I am. But so technically, yes, he does. You know. Let's continue. Let me add another statement to it. God loves you and accepts you as you are, but he doesn't want to leave you that way. So I don't have to do something to earn. Uh, book, chapter, and verse, please. Where does the Bible say that? Let's continue. Earn the love of God. I have the love of God. It is extended toward me even as a sinner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the Bible says. Yeah, so that you could get away from the sins. Okay. Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he loves me, but he doesn't want to leave. Uh, by the way, it's funny because how these ministers of Satan will do this. A lot of times they will quote the King James Bible. Only begotten son is King James Version. New versions a lot of times say one and only son. So it's weird how they'll quote the King James Bible like they've been trained in that. But then they'll say a better translation would be let me use the new versions and whatever else. So it brings confusion into the mind. And uh, God's not the author of confusion. Let's continue. Me the way that I am. The classic example is the story of the prodigal son. He sinned against his father. He came to his senses. He decided to return home. And the father saw him and ran toward him and threw his arms around him and kissed him and hugged him and said, Rejoice, this my son who is dead is alive again. He who was lost is found. And then he said, Get this kid a bath and some clean clothes. Uh, he said that? He didn't say that. He's just lying. He said, he said. It's not what the Bible says. He's lying to people. And see, we're talking about within a family there, the prodigal son. We're not talking about somebody who is completely lost. I mean, Jesus, what did he call the, the wicked people out there? He called them children of the devil. The Pharisees, you know, that overthrew the scriptures by their own traditions. Was that a father trying to call back a lost son? How can he escape the damnation of hell, Jesus says, Matthew chapter 23. You see, if the scriptures are not your guide, then false prophets like this, ministers of Satan, they can come in and they can preach to you another gospel and another Jesus and another spirit, like Paul warned about. But hey, if it feels good, do it, you know? Right? You wicked modern professing Christians. Get ready for hell because that's where you're headed if you won't repent of this. Because the boy had been hanging out with pigs. He didn't smell right. He needed to clean his life up. He needed to learn that cleanliness is next to godliness, right? Uh, that's John Wesley. That's not Bible. So this is us. We come to... Cleanliness is next to godliness. That's John Wesley is what I should say. Jesus, with all of our sin, with all of the things that are wrong, and God says, I love you. I accept you as you are. Now chapter, book, chapter, verse, please. Where is that in the Bible? Come to us with all of our sins. He says, I love you. I accept you as you are. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Until the righteousness of Jesus Christ is imputed to you, until God chooses to save you, um, he doesn't love you. Continue. Now repent of your sin and live a new life. And I'll give you the power to do that from my Holy Spirit. Ah, okay. So uh, where does the gospel come in there? I love you. Now repent of your sin. Huh? What about the new birth? 
Uh, so I've never really talked much about this guy. He's just a mega church false pastor. But just I saw that this video the other day. I saw it. And I thought this is simply not biblical. This should be good. Yeah, you can see it there. Stay away from church buildings. Stay away from hirelings like this devil. If you go to any church building or if you're watching anybody on YouTube and they don't tell you, pick up a King James Bible and look at it. Stay away from them. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.